Welcome to today's masterclass. My name is Jose Rivera, and I am the CEO of CSIA. I will be your host today. For those of you who are unfamiliar with CSIA, we are a global nonprofit trade association with over 500 member companies in 35 countries, and we have been around since 1994. To highlight just a few of the many CSIA benefits, the CSIA Best Practices Manual guides control system integration companies in the setup and running of a solid company. These best practices reflect the knowledge gained by system integrators over the years and shared freely. Any system integration company will benefit from deploying the best practices, but gaining the CSIA certification is a confirmation by a third party that you have deployed them correctly. Maintaining a valid certification ensures that your company stays on a path of continuous improvement. For partner members, CSIA offers an ecosystem to grow their system integration programs, understand their customers' pain points, monitor industry trends, and share their thought leadership. A trusted resource of qualified integrators and suppliers, the CSIA Industrial Automation Exchange helps system integrators, industry suppliers, and manufacturers and process companies connect and do business. That makes the exchange a first stop shop where end users can compare integrators, determine which products to use and have questions answered by specialists in the field. For system integrators and partners, it provides a platform to increase your digital presence, support your content and SEO marketing efforts, position your company and C-suite as thought leaders, showcase your expertise and nurture prospects by providing a trusted, credible source for information about your company and its products. Finally, a reminder that in 2021, we will have increased access to knowledge sharing, community building, and networking throughout the year when you join or renew your CSIA membership. CSIA is committed to delivering extremely relevant content to ecosystem integrators while providing partner members access to a highly engaged audience. To that end, CSIA will deliver weekly virtual events on a range of topics and experiences, all of which are open to sponsorship. Examples of the com upcoming events, we will have Agile specification um, on March 24th and on March 31st, we will have an expert panel about how to master LinkedIn and get results. And right around the corner on March 11, we will have this fun event called Nerd Immunity Trivia. This is like closest you will get during the pandemic times of building some networking and having some fun. For more information about CSIA, membership, virtual events, sponsorships, and advertising opportunities, please contact us at info at controlsys.org, or if you want to reach directly to me, Jose Rivera, or Lisa Richter, our industry director, here is our email address. So at this moment, I would like to introduce you to Michelle Klein, the product manager for Unified Operations Center, UOC. Michelle leads this offer, with 20 years of domain expertise in the execution of projects focused on the Aviva monitoring and control software platform. Michelle, the floor is yours. Welcome. Thank you, Jose. Let me go ahead and share my screen now. And thank you all for joining. So thank you all for your time. We'll be covering Aviva's productized solution offer, which is the Unified Operations Center. We'll cover what exactly that is, how that helps connected workers and those who are working remotely, how we're able to develop a solution such as this to our advanced connectivity, show information and context to those connected workers, and how you can start from a very small implementation and scale it. And we'll also end with a couple of different use cases from the other customers. And so the Unified Operations Center, when you think about it in the context of Aviva, Aviva is the largest industrial software company that's publicly traded in the world. And we have software offers all the way from the moment that you have your concept for your, for your project in order to, and you need to develop PNID diagrams or two-dimensional diagrams or even 3D models. 
and then you need to stand up your industrial software application and you need a software product for say HMI supervisory for monitoring control. And then once in operation, we have software offerings in order to perform advanced analytics and performance management, performance management and condition-based monitoring control. So we have very many, many, many wide range of software, industrial software products for in the entire asset life cycle. But what we're focusing on today is our enterprise solution for a multi-site and enterprise-wide visualization and contextualization of data in order to bring data together from not only the operations technology side, but also the information technology side and provide that for industry, very specific industry solutions. And so in a nutshell, the Unified Operations Center itself is treated as an ITOT convergence platform. It's a technology platform, again, to bring information in from the industrial control network side and merge it with more business and IT application data, maybe coming from the enterprise side or from maybe even things that are cloud hosted. People use this type of technology and this system of system approach in order to create these type of unified operation center, which are these single pane applications. Sometimes our customers use this technology to create a common control room, a remote operation center. Sometimes they refer to it as a center of excellence. But at the end of the day, this is a technology platform to accomplish a system of systems approach, again, focusing on that IT OT convergence. And we offer this solution for the infrastructure and oil and gas market, which means that it comes with templates, graphics, and a starting application very specific for, for certain industries. And then for infrastructure, that covers facility management, data centers, water and wastewater utilities, smart cities, transportation, which in also includes airports. And then for oil and gas, of course, upstream, midstream, and downstream as well. This mega trend that we're seeing today, this IT OT convergence and the need for a single pane application comes from the need to extract more value out of existing systems and existing data silos. Our customers today not only have software products and industrial software systems from Aviva in order to accomplish operations, but many different types of applications and specialized applications such as for power monitoring control, or again, for engineering and design, and lots of different systems to help them in their maintenance and their asset management. And what they'd like to do is they'd like to bring this information back together and derive the value from those siloed systems in order to derive a more holistic or enterprise view of their operations, but also have a holistic view of say their business operations and view information, view information, you know, in a more commercial or business context. They want to use their existing applications and be able to have a technology platform which they can build upon in order to do that as well. A really good example of this is what we accomplished for the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company. They had over 10 business silos and wanted to integrate them into, a single, again, into a unified operation center, into a single pane solution in order to achieve full value chain optimization. Seeing their operations from different parts of their organization in a single pane solution where others in the organization can view very strategic business and operational KPIs from one application. And you can see here accomplished on a very, very large 100, 100 foot, over 100 foot video wall. Why do customers choose a solution such as this when there are other things that are very similar on the market is a question that's commonly asked because there are a lot of, say, more reporting and dashboarding style, you know, applications out there. First and foremost, they choose a solution such as this because it's actionable. It goes beyond having um, a chart or a dashboard or report. They use the solution also to optimize workflows. And what that means is that from this single pane solution for non-critical IT assets, such as help desk systems, inventory management systems, other asset management systems, you can also do control. A very uh, good example of this is that when we go to customers today, they very often want to streamline the process it takes for, say, to identify that a piece of equipment is down that and help them to, say, create or request a work order, um, identify to the inventory management system that a work order has been requested, 
and notify others in the organization that this piece of equipment is down, but it's down, but a work order has already been requested. And so it's already begun the process for it to be under repair. When you go to organizations, that specific workflow can take up to five or six different applications to accomplish. And we're not suggesting that we rip and replace those applications, but rather converge those workflows into a single pane application where the user can then use it. And that takes action. When we say that we bring context, and that's a differentiator for us, it means that we're more than just a data basket. We're more than just a place where data is converged. We can show data, different types of data, not just data coming from different IO points from, you know, from end devices, but different types of data such as file formats, streaming video, again, help desk systems, um, you know, different types of audio and visual things, bringing them together in context. And so wherever you're at in the application, you know, the context that you're in, whether or not you're looking at a specific region, a specific site, a specific piece of equipment or the instrument or equipment on that, and then you can see all the information in context and have that information mapped directly to it using our native technology. And when we say that we're universal, it means that we're not just for, you know, brand new greenfield, greenfield uh, uh, implementations, that we also work under brownfield operations as well. Or it, and it also means that, you know, whether or not our customers want to start with, say, just converging different sites together from different parts of their operations where there are different types of, say, SCADA systems um, that are there, we can start with that. Or they can, you know, focus on, you know, bringing together, again, those business type applications and converging that data with more operational type data. And of course, we've always been you know, hardware agnostic, you know, our software and technology was not built for any proprietary hardware or specific vendor. And likewise, you know, it was not built for any specific, you know, uh, software vendor as well. And so what that means is that we're able to connect to several different, you know, physical systems and end devices, but also software systems as well, because we're an open platform. And at the end of the day, when you look underneath the hood at the Unified Operations Center, what you'll see again is our core and proven technology and the different master solution libraries that include those industry specific contents. Again, whether or not you're a data center, um, a water utility, or you're a midstream oil and gas company, that we have content very specific for that industry. And we pre-configure the technology, the software products, and those libraries of graphics and templates and tools. And we pre-configure that and prefabricate that together for you in order to accelerate the engineering process in order to create these, these single pane solutions, which can be complex to create from scratch. And we're able to do this and provide this type of solution, not just for a physical control room and those large scale video walls, such as you saw for the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company, but now transform the solution and implement it in a way where it's in a virtualized control room. And so this information and the information from the single pane solution, um, the contextualized view, um, the actionable, you know, the actionable uh, workflows, that can all be also, you know, accessible from, you know, remotely for the remote workers, whether or not they're at home or they're in the field doing rounds and translate into that, into their tablets and their mobile devices and their laptops as well. And likewise, this can be implemented on premise, completely on premise on the customer's physical hardware uh, on their own servers, but also if they wanted it to say, reduce their total cost of ownership and look into a more hybrid centric approach that we also have several solutions that we offer as software as a service. And also we can implement this solution on you know, the customer's virtualized technology or on their private clouds as well with a cloud, you know, a cloud hybrid centric, centric solution. And we're able to accomplish this so again through all our advanced connectivity. We've always been strong on the connectivity to operational technology, which means you know end devices and industrial devices such as PLCs, RTUs, DCS systems. Um, but now in this type of unified operation center, what's very important in this type of system of systems approach is being able to connect to other different types of software systems. So we're equally strong in connecting to end devices as well as we're equally strong in connecting to other third-party applications. And those third-party applications can be industrial software systems, or they can be business type and IT type applications 
that are either hosted on premise or in the cloud. And we understand that our customers also have systems that they connect to or would like to connect to that are not necessarily owned or controlled by them. And so, for example, we have our own set of APIs and where we can work with other third party APIs, such as, say, local weather, national weather agencies or transportation, national transportation scheduling agencies, where they have APIs that we can connect to as well. And we use our own APIs and those other third party APIs natively in our development environment. And so it becomes more of a configuration instead of a customization. And again, connecting to these third party systems, this is just an example of that is key because we're again, we're not emphasizing to create these type of solutions by rip and replacing you know, with, with, with the Aviva software stack. We're emphasizing to utilize the existing systems, derive more value by integrating and converging the existing applications into the single pane solution. This is just an example of say for a specialized system for power monitoring control. This is EcoStructure power skate operation referred to now as power operations, but we can connect to that system and treat it as a data source the way that we would connect to a PLC or an RTU or a DCS system, or we can integrate with the third party application. And again, very importantly, show the data within that application that's already there with their existing screens show that information in context and bring that information in context from not only the different sites, but from the different siloed third party applications and using our native technology and our visualization component in order to say, drill down to that area of focus, whether or not you're an oil and gas company or you're looking at a very specific pipeline and you're looking at a compressor station on that pipeline, if you're a water wastewater utility and you're on the domestic or potable water treatment side and you wanna drill down to a specific reservoir or pump station, or if you're a food and beverage company and you're getting down to a production line and you wanna look at part of the packaging plant, again, all of the different information from the different systems converge and viewing that information in context. And scalability is very, very important in these type of solutions because you know it's very difficult to say, um, you know, to stand up a solution such as this and create it, you know, a very, very large solution. And so it's important that we, you know, we provide this templatized approach, which allows our customers and our system integrators to smart, start at a pilot or a phase one or proof of concept level and use the existing libraries and modify them and configure them in order to scale out and roll out to other different parts of the customer's organization or to other different um, other different software systems. And so having that reusable library that is configurable, that is that can be made dynamic and reusing that backend template with the reusable graphics accelerates engineering and enables that rollout from a proof of concept to a very large scale enterprise application. And just a couple different um, use case examples here I want to show. Um, let me go over here. Is that for example here we have uh, example of a UOC for smart cities. This is a UOC for NIA or NAVA report. It's India's first greenfield smart city. And in addition to the systems you know, for public works and public utilities, they also integrated the city's help desk system. They're very motivated by common drivers for cities. They wanted to ensure the citizens quality of life and provide more reliable public services, right? To ensure safety, boost infrastructure. And of course, what that does in turn is attract, you know, revenue generating businesses. They faced very extreme weather conditions from droughts to monsoons, which affected everything from their water supplies to transportation, highways, power supplies, real big implications to public safety. And it's for these reasons that the local urban planning agency pursued a citywide digital infrastructure for monitoring and control capabilities to integrate these different city systems together and also help reduce the burden of their staff to manage those different systems. And that's just one of seven smart cities that we have executed in the Asia Pacific region using the Unified Operations Center. This use case example, this is the Barcelona International Airport in Spain. And after the owning transportation agency, IANA implemented the UOS, this type of Unified Operations Center in Barcelona, they went on to implement it as a standardized solution for their remaining 47 airports in the country. And in their own words, they wanted to transform Barcelona into the 
essential European hub and premier airport for Southern Europe. They developed an integrated and centralized control platform to accommodate the expansion of the airport, which in, ended up tripling in size. And they wanted to ensure that the platform that they put in place in Barcelona would be replicable across the other airports, of course. And that's what they accomplished is they found the way using, again, our core platform technology to integrate and manage and optimize the different subsystems and processes of the airport coming from multiple different vendor systems. This is an example of a unified operations center for building management systems. This is for the country of Qatar and the government agency Qatar Foundation constructed a 900 square kilometer city with over 200 buildings. It included a convention center and a horse equestrian. And the name of the city is actually Education City because it was built to be a global campus center, a city of major educational institutes. It also included Carnegie Mellon and the Texas A&M as well. They had an owner operator model, which means that the Qatar Foundation governed the city and the operations for each building and the industrial sites was subcontracted to third parties. And in their own words, their goal was to create a unified and completed campus in stages. And they wanted all proper control and supervision over all facilities in the city from just two central control rooms with the remote capability to override command and control. And that's what was accomplished in this single pane application. And the last example that I'll give here for the use case of the Unified App uh, Operations Center is this is actually developed by one of our system integrator partners. This is the Department of Water for Gwinnett County in Georgia, in the United States. And their, of course, vision was to be the utility of the future. And with this first phase of the Unified Operations Center, they took on a complete service transformation. They focused on optimizing performance, operational excellence, and of course, the reliability of their water distribution. And it included targeted data sharing with external city organizations. They shared operational information such as water collections data with the county's emergency operations control center so that in turn that they could monitor and respond to, again, extreme weather, natural disasters, and any other rapid response scenarios. And so in the next phase, um, so you can see here that they integrated different parts of the entire water value stream, all the way from their source water, domestic and pot, I'm sorry, potable water treatment, you know, wa wastewater reclamation and recycled water, and then outfall back into the source. And in the next phase, their priority is to further build upon this unified operation center and provide visibility across engineering and maintenance departments as well. And that was my last use case. And what I'll do is I will turn it back to Jose and let's see if we have any other questions uh, that need to be answered as well from the Q&A stream. So thank you for that. Hi, Michelle, this is uh, Tim Black. And uh, I did receive at least one question here. And uh, the question was we, with Abu Dhabi, that's obviously a very large implementation, 10, 10 separate systems connected together. How small or how, um, how scalable is the, the system? You know, can you go from a small system to a larger system? Yeah, absolutely. What you'll see is that almost all of our customers that take on this unified operation center type of projects and approach always start with a first phase, um, a pilot or a proof of concept that's very, very small. And so they take on a subsection or a subregion or a few sites of interest and integrate them usually with another business or IT type one business or IT type applications such as SAP, Oracle, or an asset management system such as say IBM Maximo. And they start at a very small level in order to you know, understand you know, the implications of creating a UOC and it demonstrates to them, especially if they're creating this type of system of systems of, um, systems, of systems application, um, how quickly that they can you know, um, have a return on their investment. Right, in order to create this solution. And so what we see is that customers end up starting again, very, very small with picking a few sites of interest and maybe one or two applications of uh, applications of interest. 
for integration. Uh, and then they'll develop again a single pane application. And they won't always create that very, a, a very large video wall for a command and control center. You know, sometimes what they're looking for is they're, they're looking truly for a single pane application, but it's not a showcase piece I mean, for some of our customers. You know, they use it in a more, you know, uh, in their common control rooms um, directly for their operations and maintenance staff um, and use it across maybe two or three monitors there. So great question, Tim. Thanks. I, I, I would like to make one comment and then I would like you to, to provide your, your input, Michelle. Sure. So there was one slide that highlighted, you know, the engineering, operate and maintain, you know, like the mm -hmm. three blocks that in the past used to be silos, right? So those doing the engineering would not talk to the ones later on the operations or even less the one on maintaining. But this is the way I see it changing the paradigm and forcing those that are involved to think differently, right? You're thinking big picture life cycle of the project. So system integrators normally are brought in, you know, to deploy a technology to, that was engineered at one point, uh, such that we can get this going. But do you envision system integrators uh, thinking about the role in a different way and maybe expanding the services they provide to their clients to go further along than just deploying the technology. Right. I mean, very traditionally in this in the systems integration space, you know, you're asked to perform right more of the HMI or SCADA portion of the work, where you're mo where you're connecting to the end devices, you're bringing them to a SCADA type screen, and you're performing startup and commissioning there. But the trend more and more that's happening is that system integrators are being asked to integrate different types of systems that are not industrial back into these type of more, you know, traditional type SCADA applications. A very common request, say, for example, is to integrate a um, live streaming CCTV camera or security system into the, SCADA, into the SCADA system. Another common request, again, is to somehow indicate or indicate on the screen that a maintenance request or a work order has already been generated for a very specific piece of equipment that is being shown as locked out or tagged out onto the screen. And so what you see is that, you know, from a systems integrator standpoint, what we see is the megatrends, they're being asked to, you know, do more and more in the space that is not necessarily, you know, the end automation controller and device that they're moving and branching out into these other systems. And so we asked the system integrators to take that, this mega trend into consideration uh, when they're bringing, making recommendations or bringing uh, value add to the customer is to think about the existing systems that they have today. Think about the systems that are sitting in silos because they're very specialized, you know, specialized systems. And think about how that information, if you, you know, brought that into back into the main operation system, how could that help operations and ultimately, you know, production? You know, there's a reason why the operations department, the maintenance department, and the engineering department are separate departments. We understand that there are different disciplines. Um, they execute at different uh, stages of the, the life cycle of the sites and of the assets, but ultimately all of them are needed in order to accomplish operations and production and there are overlapping response, areas of responsibility and information that they need overlapping. And so we asked our system integrators to take into consideration what are those overlapping responsibilities? What is that overlapping information and how you can you provide that to them with this system of systems approach with this ITOT mm -hmm. convergence approach? Very good, thank you. And maybe staying on this topic of the role of the system integrators, so on the examples that you provided, and I'm not going to mention the one of oil and gas, but you mentioned infrastructure projects related to airports, waters, and cities. Okay. And these are all, from my experience, um, clients that don't have deep pockets, you know, they're always like scrambling to get the, the money. And your ability to provide SAS, a software as a service subscription model, should be, at least in theory, one way to overcome this financing challenge 
Um, so, like, would you like to comment on that? How this could potentially open doors to, for example, here in the United States, all the water and wastewater utilities that we have that are always trapped for and for, um, and, and struggling to get funding for their projects. Right. I mean, when we talk about, you know, what's the value proposition of creating these type of single pane applications? You know, what, what's, what's ultimately driving our customers, you know, to do this, right? I mean, other, I mean, in addition to ensuring, you know, compliance and safety, of course, they're looking to reduce total cost of ownership, right? And the value proposition of the Unified Operations Center to do that is first and foremost is, you know, converge the applications to optimize workflows. When you develop the real-time KPIs, the KPIs that are both operational and have a business context, then the information that they normally see of how their, how their production levels are and if they're achieving their forecasted targets, whether or not you're in any industry, even a public entity industry such as water and wastewater, which is a public service and not for profit, or whether or not you know, you're you know, in an infrastructure industry, um, that you can see now information that you'd normally see on a you know, bi-weekly or monthly or quarterly basis, you're seeing that more in real time, which means that you can make better business decisions more quickly and make that business decision in a way where it affects operations. And so that loop, right, that cycle of seeing the right information, making a decision and asking operations to make a change in real time, you know, that, that, that loop is, is shorter, it takes a shorter amount of time. And so you're able to react much more quickly. And in terms of, especially in infrastructure markets, especially data centers, um, again, not speaking about oil and gas, but maybe an infrastructure market where things are scaling very, very quickly. And you need to say scale at the speed of not just growing organically, but growing inorganically through acquisitions and mergers um, especially when companies are buying each other out, they're looking to transform those software systems very, very quickly. They're looking for something like this to act as a standardization layer and reuse the templates and the graphics in order to standardize you know, at an enterprise level, although at a local implementation level, it will exist the way that it exists today. Again, you know, emphasizing not rip and replacing, but also bringing things back into an enterprise context, but not do, doing that in a very accelerated way to reduce the cost of engineering services and also reduce the cost of its installing additional software. Very good, thank you. Thank you. Um, I was also thinking from a financing side because you know, like once you get it to a subscription model, you're talking about the OPEX as opposed to the CAPEX. Oh, which... absolutely, Jose, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that is like a huge issue for, for getting projects you know, approved. Uh, Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? And um... mm, I, I don't have any that have come in. I don't see any. Um, that uh, I, I will mention that, uh, I mean, CSIA, you know, we're, we're uh, Aviva's a, a, a big sponsor for CSIA and we're, we're happy to, to talk with anybody that's interested in learning more about the Aviva Partner Network. And, are, and joining it. I know already we have a lot of the members are, are part of our, our network as well. And um, you know, feel free to reach out to me, tim.black at aviva.com if you would like to uh, learn more about the SI program that we have. And uh, I do appreciate Michelle taking the time to uh, speak with us today. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Tim. And thank you very much, Michelle. On behalf of CSA, I would like to, to thank you officially. Um, this was a very enlightening presentation. I got a lot out of it. I, I feel that this is like the opposite of islands of automation. This is sort of like building bridges across all this island and, and leveraging either existing installations, investment in installations or, or new additions, but maximizing that investment. I also like to thank Aviva for sponsoring this event and over the years, many of our conferences, etc. So finally, I would like to thank you all for attending this event today, and we hope you found this in event informal, informational. And we would also like to remind you that this will be available as a recording uh, within a, a few days.
So if you were not able to attend, you know, like, uh, please, um, please uh, review the recording. Just to remind you, we have some upcoming events. Uh, the next one is March 11th, Nerd Immunity Trivia Night. This will be on March 11th at 7 p.m. Central. It's an event only event. I said it before, it's supposed to be fun and it's supposed to allow us to do a little bit of networking and, uh, and community building. But then on a continuation of building your knowledge, we have the Agile specification, uh, what you need to know on March 24th and on the expert panel, how to master LinkedIn and get results. This is very important for system integrators now that we have gone virtual and this is how you need to develop your business. So thank you very much. And um, if you need to contact us, please do so. Thank you again. Goodbye.